Today, we are talking about a topic that is near and dear to your heart, and that is protein cycling for dogs. Or a better way of saying this, we're gonna teach you how to make wild broth. Great, right? What does that even mean? It means using foods that are not farmed, wild boar, rabbit, duck, deer, venison, whatever you have, I don't know what's in your area. It could be elk, I don't know, but you're gonna take the bones from that and you're gonna use it with slightly different vegetables than you normally use in your broth and you're gonna make a delicious, amazing, healthy broth that exposes your dog's body to different amino acid profiles than the food they're already eating. So varying your dog's diet is always a good idea and when you're doing homemade dog food, you wanna switch back and forth between chicken and fish and pork and beef. So maybe, and her seven brothers and sisters, typically go back and forth between pork and beef with some fish mixed in and the occasional chicken or turkey. Great, but we want to expose their body to as many amino acid profiles as possible and an easy, super cheap way to do this is to make wild broth. How do we do it? First, tell them why. Number one, protein balance. Again, we're gonna cycle through a different amino acid profiles, meaning, as you can see on the screen, for instance, one food has more lysine than the other, and so on, and you're gonna see a, a marked improvement in your dog's health. It will make them stronger, and it will also avoid, number two, allergy problems. When dogs eat the same thing day in and day out, they can develop allergy problems. Even if it's a healthy food like eggs or chicken or beef or fish, you wanna vary that. So the issue with simply not buying different protein foods all the time is it can be cost prohibitive for a lot of people. Um, for instance, in our area, pork is really cheap, but chicken and turkey are crazy expensive. So we can't always do that, especially with eight dogs. And a way to continue to add in new proteins is to simply make different types of broth. And number three, it adds new vitamins, minerals, polyphenols, especially if you vary up the vegetables you're putting in your broth. So if you're normally making your chicken bone broth and you put scraps of carrots and celery and say zucchini, this time we're gonna use same as some red cabbage or some different colored vegetables, some pumpkin, just to give them again a new vitamin and mineral profile. And let's not forget, number four is the secret one. That This one was written by maybe herself. It just tastes really good. If you've ever brought home a wild protein for your dog, they probably go crazy for it, right? When I bring rabbit home, these dogs lose their mind. When I bring home duck, unfortunately it's only available here at Christmas, there is a line of dogs salivating in front of the oven. They love it for multiple reasons. One, it may connect into their wild nature or it just might be something different. So it's something for your dog to look forward to as well, right? And that's important. So how do we even do this? It's really super simple. You're just gonna take one to two kilograms of bone. If you have less than that because these are hard to get, don't worry about it. So we're gonna take some vegetable scraps. We're gonna add an acid. In this case, I'm using apple cider vinegar with the mother, throw it in a crock pot with water, and then you're just gonna slow cook it on low for at least 12 hours. You can run it overnight, but with small bones like this, 12 hours is fine. Now, if it's something like venison or elk or even wild boar and the bones are thicker, you're gonna wanna go a little bit longer with it. Now, you can run two batches with the same materials if you're using, like this, rabbit bones. If you're using something thicker, you could probably get three, maybe even four batches. So you're gonna produce from just this little bit of bone and vegetable scrap between 12 and probably 25 liters of broth. You can freeze what you don't use. You can freeze them into ice cubes for certain dogs like this hardhead here, who will not drink the broth, but likes it as a frozen ice cube. You tell me why, because I don't know. Add between 50 and 100 milliliters per meal, and they're gonna get all of that new vitamin, mineral, polyphenol, and the new types of protein, the new amino acid profiles, super simple, will keep your senior dog healthy and happy and mentally engaged because new food means new excitement. Now, before we move on, in the description below will be a link to a free download with an infographic and a checklist for how to make the wild broth recipe. So you can always have it on hand in your phone, in your tablet, or you can print it out. Simple, easy to use. The link is in the description below. Click it, it's totally free. Ready? <laughs> Ah! <laughs>